Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. I can't sing, but you know, you get the point. So anyway, listen, welcome back to Inside the Leather. I'm your host, Ronnie from New Jersey. And as always, we're presented by Golficity. <laughs> Spike in levels all day. I love it. Listen, guys, this week on the show, we're talking off the tee. Okay? And with a very special guest. All right? He's one half or 50% of Golficity mm. and the number one Jersey Mike's advocate. Mr. Michael Fasano, thank you for joining me. Dude, thanks for having me. Listen, I'm, I'm telling honored. you, we're, 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 this is big. So first off, you know, thank you sure. for reaching out and, 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 and saying that, you know, do you think that I got something here? Yeah. We're doing big things well, together. Well, you reached out. I did, but you then reached you reached out. back out. And then we, then I yes. contacted back. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's how it works. That's right? how it works. That's how it works. I mean, you could have just said <laughs> this guy's out of his mind and you move on. You said that originally with the first tape. You did. <laughs> that's why I got nothing for six months. Anyway, so listen. So with this episode... Uh, are you lacking driver confidence, right? Uh, can't resist pulling the driver out of the bag on the tee? Well, look, we got you covered. And the only thing that I ask for you to do, okay, is if you laugh one time during this episode, you give me a like, okay? If you laugh two times, I think you might want to subscribe. It's fair. And I think three times, give us a share. Then it's like, come on. Three times in a half hour. Yeah, I mean, we're shooting for a half hour. Yeah, we're, we're shooting, shooting for it. We're shooting we're for shooting. it. But we tend to go over. We got some good stories. We today. do. I got a lot of stories for you today. We're gonna. All right, we're gonna jump right into it. Mike, mm. would you agree if I said to you, the driver is the most practiced club for your average golfers? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Right. It's the feel good club. Crank one deep. Feel good about yourself. Now. Drivers for most most golfers, would you agree, is the worst club? Yes, right. Even pros. Why, yep. Why? Why is it that the club that you practice the most is the worst club? It's a great in the question. Bank? It's a great question. But we still come back to it. We still trust it. We still feel like we need to hit it off the tee every time we step up. That's to what a four it is. And a five. We're guys. Mm -hmm. Yep. That little testosterone, a little adrenaline. You know, you. Mm -hmm. There's no better feeling, folks. If you're a golfer, you know this. There's no better feeling than when you crank one, Which and it goes have. up, mm -hmm. and it just holds. Right. And there's no better feeling. So, historically, tell me, how has your confidence been with your driver? From well, when you started to, like, say, maybe, you know, a year or two ago, like, you know, as you were growing up in the game, so to speak. That's great. I mean, I always had super confidence in the driver. It was the one club coming out of, like, my baseball lifestyle growing right, up. Right, you right. Know, I've always wanted to hit the big ball, pull the ball to left field, hit the home run. Same with the driver. So I've always had the most confidence with it. I used to hit it off the tee great. Um, I've, I've since made the switch maybe about a year and a half ago, maybe about a year ago, from the 917, right. which you see behind us here, right. Titleist 917, to the Titleist T-Series Bumblebee setup. We're going to talk about like, that. We got them here. We're like. going to bring them in. We're going to yep. bring them in. So confidence is huge because I was fitted for it. Mm -hmm. I saw the change. I saw the tightening of dispersion. Right. I saw the, the, the yardage increase. And when you're standing over your ball with a driver that you know performs well for you, it's a whole new ball. It is. It really now, is. It's funny that you said be your baseball background. Now, I read a statistic, and 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 uh, it, this was pretty cool because I have a son. All right, I have a son. He's uh, three and a half years old right now, and I was reading a bunch of articles about you know golfers when they were kids, and I read this stat was like seventy something percent of pro golfers on tour learned how to swing a golf club before a baseball bat, mm. and I thought that was an interesting oh, yeah. thing. So I because you know you swing down for the ball to go up, it's the opposite of a baseball bat, right? So I said that's it. I'm just my son. He's swinging golf clubs. Right. I, I refused to buy, and I'm a human baseball fan, mm -hmm. refused to buy a baseball bat until he figured out the golf club. Well, it wasn't working. He wasn't getting it one-handed. It was frustrating me. So finally, I caved. I bought him a tee and a ball. Gave it to him and just stepped back and said, let me see what this kid does. Yeah, yeah. My little man, right? My uh -huh. boy, right? My buddy. He walks up to this thing, lefty, cranks it, first shot, wow. bombs it. And I'm thinking, he's lefty. No wonder why he wasn't picking up on golf. He's playing right-handed club. So right, I got him right. immediately eBay or Instagram, not Instagram, eBay, listen to me, Amazon straight to the lefty golf set, and, and, and that's it. So, so he's, he's doing well now. So we're well, working We're not sending him to Seton Hall Prep, though. We are sending him we're to Seton Hall Prep. We're going to send him to Don Bosco listen, Prep. Listen, listen, right, our two high schools. Fight on this set right we're going to fight a little bit. Our, our high schools are rivals, okay? Which we Don just Bosco found out prep, we hit the record button. Seton Hall Prep. Guy comes in with a Seton Hall prep thing, puts it right on the table. Almost threw him out. Right on the table. This is my show, even though he is presenting <laughs> it. It is my show right now. So we're going with there Seton right, Hall we'll prep on this show. You, got you know, and, and I mean, really, it's not. It's hey, a rivalry. Two, good schools, two, two good phenomenal schools. schools Absolutely. But, you know, the only thing that you guys got us in is football. At the That's moment. it. At the moment. Right, at the moment. And I think Coach Fitz would. Anyway, yeah, moving on. Uh, so, look, 
So historically, you're, 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 it's funny because I'm actually the same way. Most mm-hmm. people aren't confident with their driver. For the longest time, driver was my most confident club, too. For some reason, I tend to hit the driver very well. It's mm-hmm. the short game that's always been my issue, which I'm sure you probably know. you know. But uh, it, it, the Bumblebee. Yeah. Weird. It, it, it's, it's spectacular. It's it absolutely cool? gorgeous. Should I get it? Yeah, yeah. Pull, let's, let's pull it out real fast. Now, look at it. Oh, when you pull this thing off... When you pull this thing out of your bag and you're walking up to a tee box and you're playing with a group that you don't know, you have to be able to hit driver. You do. You can't shank duff. You, you can. can't hit a fat blop. No. You, you can't. You can't. This is a very special shaft. It you, took like weeks to come in. You too. have got. Oh, that must have been the longest week. So you're like it's like three weeks. Yeah. Oh my god. Frank got his like, like weeks before me. The, it, it, it's gorgeous. Let me show you what I'm working yep. with right now. So I got my custom head cover. Speaking of Seton Hall prep. Yeah, I even got the custom is, logo and the head oh. cover with my name on it. Of you love head covers, man. I do. Oh. I got. I got. A, I got another. I got a problem with those two. But this is this is the White Walker. That's what I call this one. This is my Mizuno ST one ninety fitted for it last year by Club Champion, my man Jeremy over there. You're a big Mizuno guy, right? You know, I do. I, I love the feel of their clubs. It's funny when I went from like iron fitting, it ended up Callaway. Uh, Apex Pros were the ones, mm-hmm. but I really love the Mizuno wedges. They're blue. I just bought the blue putter. I'm going to give it a You're- shot <laughs> over a demo day at the PGA show. So I, I am a fan of Mizuno. I, I got their th- uh, their hybrid is Mizuno and my driver. I'm going to probably go buy the wedges again just because I like the way they look. I'm going to give them another shot. Okay. I'm going I'm to get properly fitted for the Mizuno wedges. I think. And you should. You so definitely Mizuno, should. Mizuno, if you're listening, come on. Let's go. Okay. Let's there make it. it so, so look good. You play good. And this goes yeah. back to a little league coach of mine, Kevin Batty, which I want to say congratulations to him. He just took Verona High School undefeated season state championship. Congrats. Wow. He was my coach starting in third grade all the way through. He followed me all the way up and actually went to Seton Hall Prep and started coaching when, we, when, my, when my class was there. Um, he told me he was, he was a big linebacker. He had just got done playing college football when he started coaching us, right? And he was a big Brian Bosworth fan. Mm-hmm. You got the Boz, yeah. you got Bo Jackson, sure. you know, Deion Sanders. That whole era of football mm-hmm. was look good, play good. You know, he had the tail, he had the razor right, glasses, right, right, the right. lines in the head. So even when I was a little kid, I used to have the – I was the kid with the visor. Now, I had glasses underneath. That was one of the reasons why I wanted the visor. But it just, they called me Darth Vader. Like, I was awesome. I was phenomenal. Uh, so anyway, so I had, like, the, the, the sleeves tied up for me. And even when I started coaching after I got done playing football at Seton Hall Prep – Looking good really matters. And, and and it even translates to golf. When you're wearing, you know, I know you guys love your foot joy stuff. And, sure. I, and I, I like the Callaway apparel, obviously, because it's my, my, my size. But when you look good in anything, you're gonna, your, your performance is going to be better. I agree with that. When you mm-hmm. look down at that club and you love the way it looks, the confidence, the pu- – just it, it, that confidence in my mind is one of the biggest things in golf. You may not be a, you have a great swing. But if you walk up to that shot and you have it in your head, I'm putting it on the green, you're putting it on the green. Yeah, man. It's huge. Confidence is huge. So speaking Talk of looking good, check out the logo. Thanks to social media, we're all, we all have an opportunity to create a brand with the following. What sets the O'Brien Creative Group apart from the other branding experts is our creative first approach to harnessing the potential of your company and translating it to the masses. Whether you're seeking out a professional branding identity or a simple logo design, you can count on the creative minds at OCG to accurately and artfully interpret your company's true identity throughout any medium. Visit O'BrienCreativeGroup.com to learn more about how they can be of service to you. Great guys over there. My man Drew. O'Brien's doing big killing things. It for you, man. I mean, I'm telling you, I love this guy. He's, he's really, really helping us out. I mean, look at the logo. Oh, it's a good. Think, and did you did you see all the, the the last videos that I posted yes. with the ball? Yeah. My logo on yeah. the ball. Oh, I'm like so it. excited about it. I like it, man. Oh, I'm so excited. All right. So anyway, let's move on. So if you're not, all right, let me see. If, if you're not one of the 519,000 people that watched your epic titleist full bag fittings. Is that video, high already, huh? It's amazing. I looked yeah. at it last night. 519,000 That video was great. Videos. That was such a good video. Yeah, thank you, thank I, wa- I probably take up at least, Christmas morning at least 20 us. of those. Yep. At least 20 of those views are mine for sure. <laughs> uh, you know, tell me about, take us through the process, you know, specifically on the driver. I know it was a whole day and you took about 300 and 400 swings. It was mm-hmm. crazy. But the driver part of it, what, what did you learn? I know you touched on a little bit the dispersion a little bit now, but just how important is it? It's obviously important to be fitted, but sure. what did you learn there? Knowing that's important to be fitted, what else did you learn? You want to know the, the, the biggest thing I learned was how incredibly important 
a golf club's shaft is. Yeah. You know, I had absolutely no idea that it was, quote unquote, the engine of a golf club. Because you think about what's what's in the head. What is inside that head that makes the ball go, um, you know, far, straight, whatever, draw it, whatever. Believe it or not, I learned so much about the shaft, hence why I have the Bumblebee. Yeah. It's because all the other shafts that I was fitted for, the stock shaft, Titleist has awesome stock shafts. They're great. Oh, I know oh, Frank yeah. plays yeah. the stock shaft in his. Um, but for me, I just needed something with a little bit more weight to it mm-hmm. and something with a little less flex. And you know what? It took a while to get, but it's made all the difference for me. Uh, and that's... And, and, that's, and, and I wouldn't have known that without the fitting. So I did my fitting at Club Champion with my man Jeremy over there. And, and it's amazing. You can go to a store and you can hit all the new company's drivers. That's not doing it. Like, you got to go deeper. Yeah. You got yeah. the shaft, like you said, is the most important. See, for me, it was where that shaft releases, mm-hmm. that release point. I don't like a heavy driver. I don't like a light driver. Yep. So I had to get something in the middle. I'm a big guy. So I got a little bit of power behind me. Mm-hmm. You know, when I get this ass behind a swing, it's, it's coming in hot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I needed stiff. But I needed something that didn't kick. You know, that release point is right. huge. So when I went through my driver fitting, 14 shafts. It, we took, I the, believe we it. took, mm-hmm. he got a baseline with my driver. Then he took the new ver. it was a ping driver that I used to have, the, the G30. Then he took the new ping G400 and put it on 14 different shafts. And we found the right shaft. Then we went to each company's brand and did each of the different, uh, the Ping driver, we did the Mizuno driver, the PXG driver. Wow, that yeah. thing is it, sick. Yeah. The Titleist, TaylorMade, Callaway, you, all of them. We went oh, to yeah. Wilson, we did all. it all, right? And it came down to me to Mizuno, and it came down to PXG, believe it or not, when you looked at the numbers. Mm-hmm. And I was a little nervous about this. Yeah. I was like, my wife's going to kill me She's as gonna it is. going to kill me if we go the other way. Yeah. We, so, but we're looking at the sound of the PXG was a little damper. It was a little, a little thuddier. Um, I just like the look. The yeah, looking down look at is my important. Mizuno, sound is important. The sound. You gotta like the sound as well. And I tell you, those are the two that perform the best, and that's it. So now, when I pull my driver out, I know it's yeah. ready. It's for me. It's good. Yeah, I'm solid. That confidence means doesn't that feel everything. good when you stand over it? It does. You know, that's also that goes it to does. me like on the other side of the game. Uh, I was just talking about this on on our podcast not too long ago. Is that the sixty degree wedge is my most confident club in the bag? Oh, it that's goes it goes sixty degree then metal. driver. Okay, and it's important because think about it. If if we're getting up as as average amateur golfers at 330, 360 yard par fours, if we're able to get that ball down two eighty down the fairway, you got sixty left. That's you it. got eighty left, seventy yeah. left. You yeah. go driver sixty and you can get lethal with that, <laughs> and then learn how to you putt. You can learn that right. Then right. you can play some golf. So actually, speaking of that, right? Mm-hmm. Risk versus reward. Okay. Okay. I started this little thing, and tell me what you think about it. My answer is risk, me. by the way. Risk. Okay. Okay. No, go ahead. <laughs> so, 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 ask, answer me this. I'm so, always the risky guy. Go ahead. About a year, about a year or two ago, I started doing this thing. I'm also extremely lethal with my three wood. And before I got fitted for this particular Mizuno, I was actually only getting about fifteen. Extra yards, okay, from my driver. Mm-hmm. That's how that's how strong I am with my three wood, right? Just bombs. And I said to myself, you know what? I score better when I'm teeing off with the three wood. I just do. So I made a, I made a, I made a stamp. I said, I pull up to a tee box. If it's less than four hundred yard par four, three wood off the tee. So if it's three ninety nine. Three wood off the tee. I don't even think about it. Okay. Because for me, I'm pumping that 250. Now I'm 150 in. Right. For me, that's my full swing eight iron. Uh-huh. And it just makes the game yeah. better. Because you're because you're dropping maybe 50% of the risk. Yeah. With the driver, your dispersions I, of the three wood. I mean, what do you what do you think about doing something like that? Do you think I know I don't want to debate you on it a little bit because I tried a season of that. I tried a season. Oh, you of, did. Okay. Of uh, any like anything with a three handle on it was was go with an iron off the tee or something like okay. that. Okay. Okay. And I felt myself going attacking more greens with eight sevens and sixes versus versus those wedges nines and pitch right. things like that. Right, so right, right. you know it's the scoring club is the driver. I feel like it's important to get off the tee long. However, to your point. This is where looking at the actual the way the hole is laid out, more, right, more right. of a strategy. That's when I'll maybe put the driver away because if I need to, I remember uh, Frank and I down in Orlando last week. We were all there. We played a course called Eagle Brook, mm-hmm. and the starter was like, "Hey, when you get to seventeen, I just want to let you know, keep the ball on the left side because if you're on the right side, there's no way you're getting home in two. Okay. So like you think about that, and the only way to put it on the left side is if you hit something a little shorter. Mm. You know, I wouldn't have known that going in. So. 
I like to look at the hole as well. I mean, just stepping up to it. Maybe that, that, that might be a great play for you. It's under 400. Boom. I know I have confidence. I'm going to stick yeah. with that three wood. Go with it. If it works, it just makes it, it, works. it, it takes the guessing sure. out for me, you know, and yeah. it makes me, it makes me feel like I'm doing the, the right thing. And, and, and that's, and that's it. Look, everybody's different. I, I have perfect example. I have a friend, Mike, uh, I don't, I'm not going to say his last name, but anyway, but Mike, he, when we're playing for fun, he's bombing drivers, mm-hmm. spraying them all over the place. Let's be honest. Right. As soon as we start playing for a little bit of cash, whether it's five dollars or ten dollars, he doesn't even pull it out of his bag. He tees off with a five iron, and he's plop, plop, yep. plop, putt, yep. par, right, moving on. And, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I can't do that. I, I don't. I want to hit the driver off the tee yep, yep. or the three wood. So, and then even my uncle Ray, my uncle Ray doesn't even own a driver. He's been golfing for fifty years. He's never owned a, col- a driver. Yeah, he literally tees off with a three iron. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm sure now he probably has some hybrids because he's old. Sorry, Uncle Ray, yeah. but it's it, that's it. it. You don't need to it, hit driver, it, but if you're going to hit the driver, eliminate the guesswork. So so now, OK, let's just say you buy one off the shelf mm-hmm. and you're spraying it. You're thinking it's my swing. It might not be your swing. It might not be your that swing. club might be releasing at a later point in your downswing yep. and forcing you to shank. It or, might be or, too or, light. It might, right. yeah, there's, there, a lot. there's a lot to it. So, mm-hmm. you know, I know a lot of people are saying, oh, well, it's expensive to get fitted. But you know what? If you get fitted for one portion of your bag each year, it's better than buying yep. a driver really that's is. not the right one and then buying lessons thinking that it's your swing when really it's the equipment. When you pull it out. Now, if I shank my driver. Yeah. I know it was my swing. Yeah. Like they was, it's not the, because I know that that's the right driver for me. So yeah. anyway, so I just Dude, it's a great mind, point. Right? I just want to add to that real quick. I would yeah. love to test this. I think this would make a great video idea. Hey, Frank, make sure you remember this one over there. Uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> I'd love to play one hole okay. 10 times or five times, 300 yard par four. I'd like to play it five times by hitting driver off tee and going for it. And then five times playing it seven iron wedge or or nine iron wedge or whatever i love it i just would love to see the result in each five times i love it what the score would be. i i'm my money's gonna be on the iron off the tee i think so too yeah i think so now i hit a couple of good pipe a couple of good drives i get up to the front lip i get close to the green guaranteed maybe two putt for birdie yeah it could work in my favor it could but then again it could work (laughs) way against me i'd love to try the challenge that's a good one that's a good one we we, we might have to do a collab on that we might have to do a little uh, you know i want to get in on that action you like throwing that word out there collab i do i you know (laughs) not for nothing i i I, we, we got back from orlando orlando was last week you know and and it was an amazing experience, and I'm sure you guys, some of you, have Ron seen had a it. smile on his Docu- face the entire the entire time. time. I was like a kid in a candy store. Yeah, I documented my club situation. I didn't get a chance to play golf. That's the funniest part. Do you know how embarrassed? Not embarrassing, but you know how hurt you I should was. Be embarrassed by that. I was so hurt that I didn't get a chance to play a round of golf, and yet I had problems with my, getting my clubs there and then getting my clubs home because they were on a different. You went flight through than me. The, the golf club luggage situation twice, and you were in Florida for three days. Three days, and you didn't play golf once. And I didn't play golf once. <laughs> <laughs> but it was still one of the coolest experiences ever, and it's on the list. And I'm, I'm building it out. Yeah, next but you year. had a great time. Next year, I think it's going to be something. Next time, I, Ron's going for three weeks. We're, yeah, Watch. it's going to be a thing. <laughs> um, let's see what else we got. Oh, do you have any? Uh, uh, oh, look, all right. I got a story for you. So, so being with the three one, right? So, I'm playing in an outing. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, you know, how they go. You're usually best ball, you know, so everybody just pounds driver because somebody's going to put it playable. You know, that's typically what it goes. I was having a bad day. This was before. Actually, this might have been a little bit before I actually got fitted for my driver. But uh, so I, 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 I'm having a bad day. Just spraying them all over the place. And they got to the point where I'm just like, I'm not even having fun anymore. Let me let me tee off first. Mm-hmm. Let me crank the three wood down the middle and let these other guys go long drive. What's our girl's name? The uh, long drive girl that we uh, had, Troy, Troy, phenomenal. Troy Mullins, she's, yeah. she's she's amazing. So let them just go bombs away, right? Sure. Let me. So we're doing this for a couple of holes. Now we get up to uh, we're playing. It's at Galloping Hills in uh, Elizabeth. Oh, yeah. It's off the Parkway the there, old in New Parkway Jersey. course. Yeah. yeah, it's great. Good, good, really nice course. One of the better public courses that I've played in a very long time. They did a nice. I know the taxpayers were a little upset because they built it like a four million dollar clubhouse, but they're killing it with weddings. Yeah. It's actually a big, big clubhouse money maker big. for the county, mm-hmm. so it's good. So anyway, so uh, getting to this, so I get to. I believe it's the fourth hole at Galloping Hills, and it's a. It, elevated tee box is an understatement i mean it's like you're you're hitting off of a mountain right it's just like so it's amazing now i get up it's the longest drive hole okay but i did not know that i did not see the sign i did not know and again i'm in this round where i'm furious i'm just hitting three wood so i get up to the three wood with the three wood not knowing it's longest drive and i just put a smooth swing on it and when i tell you this thing exploded off my club 
uh-huh. and it's just full on, and it's a beautiful hole because you're elevated, so it right, looks right, really, right. It, it looks even nicer, right? It ro- it hits. I'm gonna be honest. It had to have. It had to have hit a sprinkler head or something in the middle of the fairway because it just rolled for days, literally about a foot or two from out driving the fairway completely. Was it three bills? Oh, it was about three oh eight. I think they said. Wow. With a three wood. Now again, yeah. this elevated yeah. roll elevated, sprinkler, sprinkler something heads, that, we right? Got everything. Right. I'm, I'm not trying to claim that I could hit my three wood right. that far. The two fifty is the three wood. So anyway, so I get to the, the the reception afterwards, and they make an announcement, right? And with the longest drive, 308 yards, Ronnie, not going to say my last name. So anyway, yeah. Ronnie Rose, right? Everybody's, oh, okay, good. You know, some people, you know, they always say, yeah, bullshit. You right, know, they right. get those people. And I walk up, and as I'm walking up to go get my prize, Mr. P, who I'm playing with, he yells out, yeah, and he did it with a three wood. And now everybody's like, look at this well, guy, yeah, right? Look guy. at this guy. <laughs> On my walk back and at the reception, Four people came up to me and asked me, asked me if I was free next Tuesday because they had an outing and they needed a four. <laughs> the ringer. They're, the ringer. Let, let's bring it's this great. kid in. He's bombing 300 yards. Tr- Absolutely. It was I would cool. too. But that's anyway, incredible. so that's, it, it was, it was, what uh, did you win for that, by the way? I was like 150 bucks to the, to the, to the pro, to shop. The pro shop. Yeah. So I just yeah. bought balls because no pro shop has anything that's going to fit Anything that's going to fit you. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a common ongoing, struggle for Ron. On, ongoing theme here with the 3X, podcast. 3X, right? Yeah. That's what we're looking for, 3X, guys. We're looking for 3X. So let's go, people. Let's go. So start sending some stuff in. So anyway, um, consistent. Uh, all right. So, okay. So now well, let's talk about your, uh, do you have a setup routine? Do you have uh, any, any, anything with, with, with teeing up the ball? Do you have anything that you, that you particularly like worked routine? on? or Not, not really pre-shot. I, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is... An issue that I had, and tell me, you, you know, it, teeing up the ball. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people don't realize how important it is, because if you're teeing up the ball, and your tee is slightly cockeye, mm-hmm. just a little, a little, a little lean to the right, you hitting up. You're you're adding spin to that ball. Mm. Your driver's coming in square. That ball's not flat. It's a little tilted. Sure. You're going to add some some Absolutely. right slice spin to it, and vice versa. And even if it's forward, you're going to hit down. It's gonna. It's not gonna fly as high, and if it's back, it's gonna pop up. So teeing up a ball, I found that to be one of the hardest things for me to do. Is teeing it up, and then I gotta look at it from each way. It takes too long on the tee box. Any any issue with that, or you're just put it well, down? I see and, you and have you a little go. contraption there that helps you. You just put the tee into where that thing ends right there in the middle, and that's your that's it's just your, that's your Ronnie height. Right yeah, there. my friends, uh, my friends bust me because it's a, it's a larger tee. But it's a uh, it's a good company, and I would love for them to uh, contact me. Uh, consistent T, it's called. See, let me see that thing. T height, by the way, is very important because I have a very steep swing. Mm-hmm. So I literally tee my driver where most people would tee an iron. It's crazy. Oh, it's really? Almost virtu- that, it's that low. It's almost. I'm not going to say it's driver off the deck, but it's it's close to it. It's close to it. Okay. I swing down on the ball. Whatever. Frank T's is, is up with like an eight inch T. You know, like, <laughs> I don't know. He swings so far up. He tries to send right. it to the to orbit. Right, right, right. So everybody's different. But you're right. The way your T. I mean, it's funny you say that because eight years ago when Golficity just started, it was a blog. Uh-huh. And the first article we ever wrote for the site was what is the proper height to T your T? Yeah, to your ball. Interesting. That was our first article that's on Golficity back in 2012. Oh, that's cool. You know, and every now and then we got, you try to go back and revisit it. But um. Yeah, man. This this will definitely work. There's nothing to be ashamed about they, with that. No, no. And it no. doesn't and break, it, right? It, it, well, they, uh, I tend to every now and Oh, you do break those? They, uh, unfor- uh, yeah. You must swing like an animal. I, Things I, made I, out of like rubber. I, I mean, look at me. I mean, come on. <laughs> but no, it, it's got a little nub in the middle and consistent T, reach outs and the feel, you know. Yep. But it's uh, it, it's perfect for me. So I literally, it, it takes the guesswork out. I go right down so it's flush with the ground. And that, for me, is the perfect yeah. Height off the ground. That's good. That's a good yeah. height. That's about so, my height, a little bit lower than that. Yeah. So anyway, that. so that's 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 something that I think people need to need to look into. Like they really need to yeah. think about it because again, you got the right driver. Now you tee it up right, and then if all else fails, then it's your swing, and then it's just on you. You got to deal with it. So uh, all right. So speaking of consistency, you want consistent sandwiches? I know you're. I know you're big Jersey Mike's guy. I'm but starving. I uh, by the way, I'm, I know you're about to talk about sandwiches. I'm a little upset you didn't bring anything for this uh, uh, Stromboli. Uh, sorry, cannolis. Uh, oh, listen, semolina baguette. Listen, I, you know, I, I gotta start. I gotta start bringing some food. The problem is we shoot early in the morning. So I gotta the, go get it uh, night before. The Schwiedel. The Schwiedel. Yeah, the Schwiedel. I like the Schwiedel. Yeah, the Schwiedel. big. Sparrows make Schwiedel. No, they make they, uh, they everything they make is phenomenal. But they yeah. get the, the, the semolina bread, the sandwiches that you they make. You keep talking about their sandwiches. You oh, gotta bring me. Where, where is it? It's in Montclair. Let me let me let me let me let me tell right. you. Did I just tee that Spar- up? Spar- you did. You, you teed it up nice. Sparrow's Deli and Catering located at one nine seven Bellevue Avenue in Upper Montclair 
07043. They got a, a sad the, the paisano. It's an Italian sub, but they got the Duke's man. It's so good. The bread makes the sandwich, just like makes the, the fitting the makes time. the driver. I know. Right I there. mean, come on. You know, just, Sparrows, check them out. The phenomenal deli. The, the catering, too, for all you need. Super Bowl party? Yep. Let's go. I always say if Jersey Mike's a better bread, it would be lights out, but. <sighs> it's hard need, to it, mass produce the bread, though. That's, that's you why better. you got to go to the locals. You got to bakery, support drop it off at three in the morning outside the front door. Like but I don't know. Else. Can they do that, though? It's a it's, it's a, a franchise. Type, yeah, yeah. I think they so got deals call with up the a bakery. Nah. Make it happen. I agree. <laughs> but anyway, talking about look all the, all this talking about drivers, right? Yes, makes me think of 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 a couple of things. TV and film has, I think, done a good job with 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 the the, the limited stuff that's out there about golf. They do well. I think there needs to be more. I agree. Definitely. I think golf needs to be more, you know, themed throughout movies and, and, and TV shows. I think there's a lot of funny things that happen on a golf course. You get that, some sprinkles. Modern right. Family, you'll see Ed O'Neill out on a golf right, course. Right, right, right. Stuff you, like that. You, so, so let me, let, let me, I want to just talk about a couple of the funny, famous golf swings. Oh, these are okay, great. Okay, on TV. And for me, hands down, number one is Jackie Gleason. <laughs> the honeymooners. I, I did a little. I did a little remake of the honeymooners, but when I was out in L.A. in the acting days, I bet. And uh, a little Jackie Gleason. It was. It was solid. It was solid. You get your chat. I'm going to put it the link in there. Able to find it? We can. Yeah. yeah. Three fifty seven Chauncey Street on YouTube. It's the it three fifty seven thirty Chauncey minute Street. episode. I thought it was good personally, but anyway, there's a there's an episode in, in the Honeymooners where uh, Ralph Cramden has got to go play golf with his boss, and he tells him that he's a great golfer, but he's never played golf before. So now him and his partner are they're, they're reading on how to play golf, mm-hmm. and the first thing he says, "Well, you got to." Well, he comes out with the get up, the whole outfit, you know, the, the right. knickers, the hat, the right, whole right. Line, just a classic scene, right? And he turns around and he, and he, and the first thing it says, "Address the ball." And he looks down at the ball and says, "Hello, ball." <laughs> it just, it just, it just was hilarious. Yeah. Especially if you're a guy, it's just a funny yeah. moment, mm-hmm. you know. And some of the other ones that come to mind, obviously, uh, Rodney Dangerfield, I, one of my favorites of all time. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is mm-hmm. one of my fa- Caddyshack is top five movie for me of all mm-hmm. time. Yep. he is top five comedian of all time. He's, he's probably my favorite person ever. Wow. And I wish, I wish I really had a chance to meet him. Mm-hmm. Um, but funny Rodney Dangerfield story. So. People don't know. People think that Caddyshack was his first movie. It actually wasn't. Like nine years prior, he had did like a, a, a. It wasn't a comedy. It was like a serious movie, and it flopped. It didn't do very well. So nine years later, mm-hmm. he turns around and he does a. Uh, uh, he gets the part in Caddyshack, right? So now it's his first real movie, kind of comedy movie, right? So he's in there first day of shooting. He's out there. He's shooting, and he's he's you know doing all his jokes. And halfway through the day, he's in his trailer. He doesn't want to come out after lunch. He says, I'm not coming. I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm done. I'm out of here. This isn't working. It's not funny. No one's laughing. It's not working. He's freaking out. And the producers are they're, they're begging him to try to like, what are you right, talking right, right. about? This is gold. Rodney, this is amazing. Nobody's laughing at my stuff. It's not working. Rodney, it's a movie. <laughs> the camera guy can't laugh. <laughs> The boom mic. They're trying not to laugh. <laughs> right, right, like, right. that's the whole point. Mm. Like, they can't have people laugh. He's so used to being on the front of a live studio, you know, live audience, you know, doing a stand-up routine that he actually thought that it wasn't working. Right, right. So once he realized that it obviously was working. Then he made it. it how went, great it, it is. Went, it, went, it went, which is gold. Just gold. One of the best <laughs> movies of all time. And then some of the other ones that I think about is um, obviously Happy Gilmore. Of course. You know, Adam Sandler, a little snub. He got snubbed. I haven't seen the new movie yet, but I heard he got snubbed this year. Dad, yeah. I feel bad. That's what happens. You make too many crappy movies. Yeah. You know, I love him. I, I Don't get me wrong. I'm a great. fan of his. I yeah. mean, I got to meet him and, and, and when I was in LA a little bit. He's he's a good dude. Yeah. But you get he a, seems like a good you dude. You get 10 Razzies. It's kind of hard to all of a sudden get, get right. an Academy Award. Right, 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 right. But I feel bad because I think he should have done it. I, mm-hmm. I, you know, good. That movie's, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I haven't, I haven't seen By it. By the way, I watched you back in that Britney Spears video oh, you, you were you were taught you were handsome oh, oh you yeah. still are handsome yeah. I'm not taking that away from you Thanks. but you were nice and all cleaned up well nice haircut yeah things were things were different then <laughs> things are different i didn't have two kids <laughs> <laughs> things were things were different then yeah you know great. and i was trying real hard that's a funny story too because that i was supposed to be a fat guy in a little coat they were going for the chris farley look in that because that was your line does this make me look does fat? this right so i'm in a britney spears music video i want to go if you want to check it out on youtube uh at the beginning is a press conference and she's asking questions or people are, I'm in the media asking questions and they get to me and my question was, Brittany, 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 does this suit make me look fat? And her answer was? Yes, it does. <laughs> I was wearing a size 42 suit. Now I'm a size 
52 suits. So it's, yeah. it was, uh, the sleeves were up to here. Yeah. They had to sew it so it stayed shut. It's I incredible. couldn't sit down because yeah, everything was going to rip. Yeah. But then on camera, my mother calls me up after she sees, oh my God, Ronnie, you look so good on that, command, that video <laughs> thing that you did with that pretty girl. <laughs> Because on cat it didn't play in person. Right. It was hilarious. Yep. It was fat guy in a little coat. But on camera, camera right? you looked fit and nice. I and looked. Taut. I looked phenomenal. Yeah, you looked great, man. I looked phenomenal. So anyway, so all right. So what Who else, else we, we got? Let's see. Oh, uh, are you a Seinfeld fan? Uh, die Hard. I quote it the often. Best. The best. I quote it often. When Kramer busts into Jerry's office or room, uh, apartment and busts out his golf swing. Yeah. When he talks about he's got 600 titleist balls that he stole from Who the range. Who wants to have some fun? <laughs> the best swing. It's great. The physical comedy on that guy was just incredible. incredible. So so that actually leads me to another story. So I'm working in, I'm in Santa Monica, California now. Right, You'll like this. And I'm working at a private restaurant, right? It's like a members only lounge, you know, real high end chef, you know, famous chef was there the whole night. And uh, the owner of the restaurant was a member at Riviera, mm. okay, country club. And oddly enough, one of my friends actually out there in LA, Joey Ips, was a caddy at Riviera as well. So he's got some stories. We're going to try to get him on the show too. Uh, the owner calls me up because I was like the door guy because it was like a, a, a lounge. Right. And then also like a matron there. I kind of like did everything. I just stood at the door. Right. And he calls me up and says, Hey, Ronnie, got a, a you know, member of Riv, a friend of mine from Riv is going to come by, take care of him. You know, his name is Larry. All right. And Larry David walks up. And I'm, f- I mean, talk about freak out. Now, I'm an actor in LA, mm-hmm. die hard, die hard Seinfeld fan. Curb had, I don't know if it, season one had just aired and they were about to do two or right. two and three. It was right in the height of Curb. Sure. I freak it out. I've never been nervous really in uh-huh. my life until that moment. Like, so la- now I'm like, what am I going to do? I got to make him laugh. This guy can change my life. Immediately. 100%. Uh, ironically, at this, at that time, I'm working on, remember the stock tip scene? Yeah. How do you forget that one? Right, right. With, with, with George with the in the diner with the cigar. Right. Sure. So, I'm working on that. I rewrote the whole scene into a monologue because it's a it's a scene with multiple characters. So I, mm-hmm. I rewrite it to one to, to, to one uh, monologue, and I'm actually working on it. So I got it memorized. I'm ready to go with it. I said I got to find a way to tie this in. So I bring him in, right? I sit him down. I introduce him to the chef. I show him what's going on. You know, I I you know I offer up a couple of recommendations. Now you're probably trying to make him laugh along the way. Hundred percent. I can see you 100%, doing that. Hundred percent. Okay, okay. The way I'm describing the food, no? nothing. Okay. Yep. Dead face. Mm-hmm. Not not even like the. Almost made me feel like he just wants me to leave. Gotcha. Like, get, get yeah, I could see me, that. Right? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm pissed off. I'm, I'm like, oh, damn it, it's not working, right? So I give him some recommendations. And people tend to take my recommendations when it comes to food. I mean, right? Yeah. So, so anyway, so okay. So now he's done. And I've been thinking the whole time he's eating, how can I do this? So I'm walking him now. This is, oh, this is such a true story. So we're walking now. And it was in an alley. You had to kind of go down an alley. It was Santa Monica. It was nice. It wasn't like a dirty, creepy you know, Bruce Wayne parent getting killed, you know, this, right, this right. thing. But anyways, we're walking down the alley, me and Larry David, and I'm trying, and it's small talk. I'm not trying to be like, an, you know, an asshole about yeah, it, but course. I'm just trying to get him to laugh. So as we're walking this way, two people are walking towards us, a guy and a girl. And I'll never, who's this? Who's this? What do we got? Pete, <laughs> shut the phone off, Pete. We got, it. they probably couldn't hear the mic. Anyway. Yeah. So we're walking. So two people are walking. Guy and a girl walking this way. Me and Larry David walking this way. The guy says, holy shit, Larry David, I'm a huge fan. Larry doesn't break stride. Dead face. Keeps walking. Says, I know. You told me three times already tonight. (laughs) Now I'm walking, right? I can't believe he just said this. Dead face. No smile. Nothing. I look back. Right, I'm looking back to the guy right. to see his reaction. Right. He stops dead in his tracks and looks at his girl. And goes, Larry David, such a dick. <laughs> I now I turn back to Larry as we're because we're still walking, like we didn't stop walking. Right. Larry had the biggest smile on his face, yeah, but he it. didn't show it. The yep. kid didn't see it. Uh-huh. It was like an Andy Kaufman, like I'm gonna make myself laugh yep, right yep. now. That guy, Larry David, laughed to himself. I saw it because I saw him smiling. That guy is going to tell that story about Larry David being a dick for the rest of his life, and that made Larry David laugh his ass off. That's so great. It was. It was just. It was phenomenal. I was like, "That is what this guy 
needs to make himself right. laugh. He's right. got to do something. It was amazing. So That's it. we get to the so we get to the valet stand, and I take the ticket for him, right? okay. and I give it to the valet guy, and I said, "Do me a favor, Lo- get lost for ten minutes. I got to give this a shot." Right. So what did I do? Uh oh. I, I had to write it out for today. Right. Here's the, here's the scene. Take a look at it. Oh yeah. So I wrote out the scene just oh, now yeah. for me to read it to you. But I did this off the cuff. Obviously, I didn't know he was coming. This is great. And I just go into the monologue. You know, and I'm hitting with it. Uh, you know, Jerry says, you know, hey, Big Daddy, you know, I'm curious. How much did you clear on that transaction? And George, this is where it starts. I don't, I don't like to focus on that. I don't like to discuss figures, you know. I don't know. What? 8000 It's a Hyundai. Get out of here. I told you not to sell. Simmons made money. Wilkinson's cleaned up. I told you. Those trips were relationship, relationship killers. killers. Too bad you can't get your buddy Superman to fly around the earth at super speeds at reverse time. You can go back, get your money, and not sell the stock and avoid taking that trip to Vermont. I'm, I mean, I'm doing this at 100. I mean, veins popping out. I'm right, trying right. so hard. Audition of hard. your life right here. Audition of my life. Larry looks at me when I get to the end. De- again, dead straight face and says, I wrote that. Oh, shit, Larry. What do you think I'm doing it for? Like, who going to talk? He says, you know, and now, of course, the car comes. He says, let me get your number. Oh, I did it. Mom, you I did, made it. I made it. it. Did Life it. is over. Life is changing. Yep. Larry yep. David asked me for my telephone number. So I give it to him. He's getting in his car now, and he turns back. And, I, you know, I give him the number, and he's in the car, and he looks back to me. He goes, Two nights, I want to come back. I'm going to give you a call. Get me a table. Set me up. <laughs> I said, what about curb? You know, put me on curb. All right, Larry. I'm like, oh, I got another shot. Yeah, right. But it, it just, talk about a golfer. Yeah. Larry, He's Larry golfer. can play. He's a golfer. Larry you would have been great play. as the role of his partner in curb, as uh, his manager. Who, me? Yeah. Well, that's what they. That's what you were thinking. You know what's funny? I actually did get an audition. There was a, a nephew okay. of, 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 of his agent. Got it. That I was, I was Jeff? Really, yeah, Jeff, Jeff, yeah, Jeff, yeah. And I, I didn't get it. Obviously, but, you're here. I mean, I'm here. I'm, at, yeah. I'm doing this. That's right. I would have happened. This is better. Fun. This is fun. <laughs> this this yeah. is on my time. Yeah. This is my time. That's this right, is right, good. Right. I love it. But, uh, but so, that's great, you know, though. Yeah. And, and, and being in L.A. Was, was, was awesome. There were so many cool so many cool stories, so many cool people that I met. You know, I, sure, real quick, last one, Sherman Oaks, right? When I lived over in Sherman Oaks for a, a year, uh, I used to go to a driving range there. Mm-hmm. And it's Super Bowl week, so this, this, this oh, kind of ties yeah. in nice. If I asked you who the GOAT in the NFL was, greatest of all time, who would you say? Uh, the common answer, Jim Brown. Very good. Yeah, Jim Brown. Or Jim Tom Brown. Brady, I mean, now people are saying Tom I mean, Brady. Tom Brady. And even being a Jet fan, I, I, almost, can't, right. I almost can't argue. You got to look at numbers. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, whatever. But so Tom Jerry Brady. Rice. But Sorry, Jerry yeah. Rice. A lot yeah, of people yeah. say Jerry Rice. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So Joe Montana. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Jim Brown. So I used to, I, there's driving range of Sherman Oaks. Jim Brown is there. And he's got his own director's chair. And it's it's a shame you see you see how you know how hard you know his 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 body is dealing with mm-hmm. you know with stuff uh, yeah, you man. know which makes me think of pro that staff. Beats you. You know, it does it, it does. My my buddies at pro staff check them out. Northern New Jersey nine locations. Um, but 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 Jim Brown he would sit up in his high director chair. He had the old gopher thing to put the ball on the tee. He just he would just sit there for hours. He just loved it. He loved the game of golf. Yep. People would just come on the base next to him and talk to him, and and he loved me. I would tell him stories. I would I would I would get him going a little bit. Right. And I, and, and I, uh, he would hit his drive and he would sit down and we'd talk at football. And I asked him one question. I said, who's the one player in today's game that you think would have made it, like would have been dominant as they are now, whatever, back in your day? What's the, who's the first one that comes to your mind? And without even hesitation, he says, there's only one in my mind. And this was a couple of years ago, but he says, uh, Adrian Peterson. Mm. He says that man would have played and would have been dominant at any era, at any time. Doesn't matter. Because obviously the, the rules back then were different. They ran more. They're getting clotheslined. I mean, ripping helmets off. Like, yeah, I mean, it was man. a violent, violent yeah, game. Lawrence Taylor. And uh, yeah, yeah, and, it, yeah it, it's just. Right, sure, yeah, sure. But Adrian Peterson, I thought, was a, you know, a good thing. That's, that's great. That's great. Was he a good golfer, Jim? Poking balls or what? He was poking. I mean, he was All-American lacrosse player at Syracuse. Wow. He wow. was uh he could have played for you know he was he was the best lacrosse player in the country in college he was obviously the best football player in college so right, right. and I uh, went on to be the like, greatest I think he only played like eight or nine years in the NFL mm-hmm. or maybe not even seven seven or eight but he was just 
he, just an absolute yeah. animal. Yeah. Absolute animal. But uh all right, so let's let's talk now real quick. Swing tempo. You got anything for swing tempo? Um for me, I like to just keep it slow, maybe sing a song in my head. You do, I'm, you do a little you do you're you're a big singer, I, yeah, right? You're a big yeah, music I'm a musician guy. as well. I mean I, I uh, one coach told me once to uh sing the waltz during your backswing. You know that one that's like da 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 da. Yeah. da. Interesting. And, you know, I mean, I don't do that now, but right. but but <laughs> I'm not a psychopath. <laughs> no, no, but um, I've heard a lot of people use music. I've heard a lot of people use sayings right. that um, I know you've referenced this. Your three you, syllables. What do you got? I personally, my man Joey Ips taught me this. When you're sitting, uh, you're dressing. Ron E. Rose. Ron, Ron e. e. Rose. Ron E. Rose. But what if it's Ronnie Rose? Well, you got it. That what if it's Ron Ronnie e. Rose? You got to do Ron you E. Rose. Be. So for you, it would be like Jersey Mike. I like that. Jersey Jer- Mike. So whenever you're losing your swing, he would. My friend would say, "Give me the Ronnie Rose," and I would literally say it out sure. loud while I'm hitting it. And it's amazing how it just reconnects the swing and it it just helps the driver. I yeah. mean, it really helps all the clubs. I kind of do it with all of them. I like swing. that. Yeah, well, maybe it's I'll a, use it's Ronnie a, Rose. It's a, it's a good thing. You, Ronnie, yeah, it's kind of weird, but I use it. I'll it's try a little it. weird. Just but that's what keeps your tempo. I like that's whatever what keeps works, my tempo. Ron I've heard e. people Rose. actually write slow on the left hand of the glove because it's the last thing you're looking at oh, when you look down. That's pretty cool. I might or, try that or too. Or something. Something else. Like, you know, yeah. little saying. No, I like it. something. How about par five? You want to do par five with me? I do. I would be honored. You're going to be all right? All right, okay. cool. Let's, let's jump right in. All okay. right, we're finishing up here. Coming in the home stretch. So as always, Part 5 is brought to you by AIM Health and Spine Regeneration Medicine Institute. Back pain got you out of the game. Knees won't let you get up those stairs. Elbow pain killing your golf swing. Fear no more. Relief is around the corner. Dr. David Perna is no stranger to human performance. A former All-American football player at Johns Hopkins, my buddy. And national level Olympic power lifter. Dr. David Perna has been serving the prestigious orthopedics department at Mount Sinai in New York City and is now serving the greater New Jersey area at AIM, uh, AIM Health. We offer the most advanced non-surgical treatments for the spine, pain relief, sports rehab, and body regeneration. Book your consultation today and get back in the game. Call us at 973-251-2189. Aim Health, my man. So, okay, so, par five. Par five. Let's do it. Most amount of money you've spent on golf equipment. Wow. One piece. One piece? One piece. Uh, you know, we've all bought that. I think I bought like a driver at some point for over four hundred dollars with a know. custom shaft. <laughs> no, <laughs> thankfully not that one. Right. Um, but uh, but back in maybe a couple years ago when I was upgrading from that beginner set, mm-hmm. and moving mm-hmm. from my Nike, I went from the Nike uh, Covert two point driver okay. with the Nike uh, okay. Ignite. Irons. Okay, I was a okay. Nike guy. No, it's funny because me yeah. too. Yeah. I was. I played the Vapor Pros, yeah. the black with the blue, mm. because I just liked the way they looked. Yeah, definitely. I wasn't ready to be hitting blades, but right. I was right. because whatever. I think I, I think the biggest ticket I, I swiped at a, at a golf store was probably about four hundred and fifty bucks. I think I upgraded to the TaylorMade back then. It was like four years ago. Oh, three years the ago. TaylorMade. I used to have the, the R nine. Had the R nine. The R nine. The R eleven. Yeah, the R eleven. Yeah, yeah, I brought my brother the R one. The for R1. his birthday, had the racing stripe on. Yeah, the racing stripe. Yeah, it looked cool. Right, you can get those now for about twenty eight bucks. <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh, most amount of money that you ever gambled on a golf course, whether you won or lost. Like, you know, do you, 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 you gamble at uh, all? You, yeah, every now. Fun every, bets? What do, yeah, you, what do you got? Every year I have the same group of guys who we go out and we play a, uh, we call it the uh, the cup, where we actually have physically have a cup, but there's money on the line too. Mm-hmm. So we'll play um, basic Nassau 10-10-20. Okay. So the most you can lose on that is is 40, but we do something if you're down two, the, other t- the, the, the team who's down can press. For okay, right, right, right. So you can get up to nine presses or so. So I think at one point we cleaned up so well we won everything one day. I ended up walking out of there with eighty bucks. Yeah. You know, it's cool because like you're like, hey, hey, honey, I'm coming home with dinner tonight. <laughs> right, I, right, I won right, it on the right, golf course. Right, right. She's like, wait, what? That, that's good. That's yeah, good. You that's, know, so <laughs> mm-hmm. that's awesome. So speaking of gambling, actually being with it Super Bowl, one of my one of one of my followers. Right, Mr. Mr. Bill Bill Gates, uh, Gates like Bill, Gates is his like name, Bill, I, right? You know, okay. like, he comments. Uh, we got a little thing going, a little friendly bet. He, he didn't like the fact that I, in my last little post, that I said I'm going with San Francisco in the under for the Super Bowl. Okay, he thought I was out of my mind with that, so I said a little friendly wager. What do you say? So you're betting with the fans now. I'm Ron. betting with the fans now. Okay. It's a fr- no money, no money on the okay. line. We're doing friendly wager. I told him, I said if I if if San Fran wins the game. Then he's got to just make a video, a, a, a story. So only 24-hour life. Got it. That I'm the greatest thing in the world and vice versa. That I know everything about football Incredible. and he knows nothing. I love that. I love it. So, I love so shout out to him. I Keep love the, the comments challenge. coming, guys. We're interacting. We're doing big things. Number three, most embarrassing thing in your golf bag. Wow. 
And if you don't think that you have something embarrassing, something that maybe you you, you get some the business. I have my daughter's putter in my bag right now, (laughs) as well as three of her pink golf balls. Yes. Does that count? It does. I mean, everything it else is pretty good. I got a glove and range finder, so I'm not, not so really embarrassing. Not there not might be a Nature Valley bar from 2016. Oh, that's my favorite. Just sitting my at the bottom. Favorite. They're solid. What about They're you? What do you got in your bag? What do you think? No, I, I got a lot. Did you have a Twinkie I, in there once? Oh, I got, I got a lot of, I got, <laughs> I got, I got, I got a lot of food that just that pops one? out. No, it was me. It was me. Thanks for just throwing it out there. That's that's fantastic. That's good stuff. So we're gonna move on. Uh, that's the next question: Is what's your go-to snack in your bag? Go-to or on, snack. During a round, like what's the um, one thing? For me, we all know it's hot dogs. You do a hot dog? I got well, a pro couple, shop hot dog or a couple hot dogs. Yeah. Okay. I'm a turn, turn, turn. hot dog. Yeah. I'm a Cliff Bar protein. Uh, the Builder Bars, the twenty. Okay, so you're like you're trying to get the protein. You're like trying to be healthy. Trying to be healthy, but never ends up you know it always gets worse there's always a snickers bar later on on the turn snickers are love good. a good snickers they the satisfy snickers. they do they satisfy especially when you're having a bad round oh, it's like God, the commercial you're not yourself right back in yeah have a snickers uh and last one uh part of your game that you're not 100 percent truthful about uh long irons oh what do you mean truthful truthful like, like you know lying about? like yeah yeah like if you're gonna play somebody for a match you, you, you know you're 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 a 10 handicap but you say you're a 12 uh you say to your drive goes 285 but it really goes 260 wow. those are types of you know you know you sandbag at all? You try to tell people to yeah. I think, I think just okay. just easily telling people I'm a twelve is is my lie because I lately I've drifted up to like a thirteen two. Okay, so it's just easy. I just it's a number I remember. Right. So I'm and lying. It about sounds that. better than 13. I mean yardages. <laughs> I don't know why lying, lying about yardages really is going to help anybody. It's not. You know, although there are a lot of people it's who not. say they hit, but that's great. I mean, what's your handicap? Good for what you. do you shoot? Right. Yeah, because yeah. that's really all that matters. Uh, Have I hit drives over three hundred? Yes. Does it happen often? I mean, yeah, yeah. Does it happen often? Eh. Doesn't happen too often. It's usually two eighty. Well, whatever. Right. But you know. But I think, I mean, just a handicap. And it's not a lie. It's just an easy. Right. No, no, I get it. I get 12, it. 13, I, I, 11. I got, I got people, like I said, they sandbag. You know, they're telling me they're a 22 when they should be like a 17. Yeah, that's. So that's, now I'm losing, I'm losing the match. The I'm using the tournament. I'm losing the cash by yeah. two strokes when I'm giving them an extra five. That's, that's, that's what I'm kind of. Yeah, that, that never to, made you know? sense to me. But anyway, that's it. That's it. Episode hey, four dude, in the great. books. Special thanks to Golficity and my guest, Mike. And as always, give it to me with. Keep it inside the leather! leather.